Hi! It's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is abolish. All this week, I've tried to pick out verbs that are being used frequently if you're watching or reading the news and the current events that are happening in the United States. This word, abolish, is something you might uh, have, have heard recently, and so I thought we'd look at it a little bit today. The word abolish really only has one meaning, and that is to formally end a system, a practice, or an institution. When I think of this verb, I think back to studying United States history. Uh, this word abolish was used frequently as we talked about uh, the practice of slavery and the end of slavery in the 1800s in the United States. But you'll sometimes hear this word abolish used to talk about other laws or practices uh, that people are trying to end. So they might be advocating or telling people we need to abolish some sort of practice. This verb is a regular verb. And I want to note one thing about pronunciation, and this will uh, become more important as we look at related words. Abolish, the A is making an uh sound. Uh, abolish. So if we want to make the progressive form, all we need to do is add ing to form abolishing. The past tense and participle form of this verb is made by adding ed. Because the verb ends in a sh sound, the ed is going to make a t sound. Abolished. Abolished. This may be disappointing to some viewers, and it may be a relief to others, but there really are no phrasal verbs that that use abolish. So I don't have anything additional to share with you today, um, which again, like you might think, I can I can learn this verb because there's just one meaning. So let's move on to doing some practice with other verb tenses and our verb abolish. Today, we'll look at the simple past tense, present perfect, and we'll talk about necessity using the modal must. Let's start with simple past tense. When we're using simple past tense, we're talking about an action that was completed at a definite point in the past. So in all of my examples today, you're going to see references to years, uh, and that's to help convey that idea that we need a definite time in mind when we're using the simple past tense. So if I want to make an affirmative sentence, I'm going to use the past tense form of my verb. And it doesn't matter what my subject is, the past tense form is going to stay the same whether it's I, you, we, they, he, she, or it. So let's look at an affirmative example. The United States abolished slavery in December 1865. So uh, again, definite point in the past tense. If we want to make a negative sentence in the simple past tense with any verb, we're going to use did, not, and then the base verb. And you may hear native English speakers use the contraction didn't when they're talking. All about being faster and communicating your ideas quicker for, for most people. So let's look at an example of that next. The state of New York didn't abolish slavery until 1827. So uh, you, for some people, especially uh, if you've not studied United States history before, you might be kind of wondering uh, how I can have these two sentences and they are both uh, true or factual uh, pieces of information. So uh, in the United States history, some states decided to 
end the practice of slavery earlier than the country as a whole did. Um, there was a uh, war fought over this, this issue in the 1860s um, with most of the northern states saying we're against the practice and the southern states saying they wanted to continue the practice of slavery. Let's look at a yes or no question now in the simple past tense. To do that, I'm going to start with did, then I'll have my subject, and then the base verb, no ed. So here's a, uh, a question in the simple past tense. Did Illinois abolish the death penalty in 2011? Uh, and the, sh the quick answer to that question, in case you're wondering, is yes. Um, but again, uh, this question is asking about ending the practice of uh, sentencing someone to death uh, for committing a very serious crime. Uh, usually it's reserved for murder. Next, let's look at the present perfect. We can use this verb tense a couple different ways. One way is to talk about an action that started in the past and it continues into the present. Or another practice might be to use it uh, to discuss something that happened at the, in the past, but we don't know exactly when. So uh, you might hear this referred to as the indefinite past. Um, so we might know, and, or we, it might not matter. So uh, let's look at an example of an affirmative sentence. Uh, but, but before I do that, I'll remind you to make the present perfect. We need to use have or has, depending on our subject, and then the past tense or participle form of the verb, uh, which in this case, they're the same. Here's an affirmative sentence. New Zealand has abolished all COVID-related restrictions. So I um, saw this sentence uh, in a newspaper article I was reading. Uh, the country of New Zealand has been able to keep uh, their citizens quite healthy and prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19. So they have ended the restrictions. Uh, if we want to make a negative sentence in the present perfect, we're going to insert not after has or have, depending on our subject. And again, you might notice native speakers using the contraction forms hasn't or haven't. Here's an example of that. Some states haven't abolished the death penalty. Again, another true statement. There um, are several states uh, that, that have this as a law. Next. Let's look at making a yes or no question um, use in the present perfect. To do this, we'll start with have or has, then our subject, and then the participle form of the verb. Has the state abolished travel restrictions due to COVID? So again, this question is asking about ending uh, certain rules that may be limited the ability for people to travel or come in to a particular state. Next, let's talk about necessity. So um, we tend uh, to use the modal must to describe uh, something we need to do, right? And when we, we want to be really sort of strong with this statement. And uh, it's with modals must that I have seen the word abolish used quite a bit this week. Uh, and he, we're gonna look at an example uh, that, that I've, I've taken uh, out of a newspaper article again. Uh, but to make an affirmative sentence to, to talk about necessity, we can use the modal must and then the base verb. And uh, that's going to be true no matter what the subject is. So here's an example. We must abolish white supremacy. We must end that practice, is what that sentence is saying. In the negative, we can insert not after must, 
Uh, and in the United States, it's not common to hear a contraction form with that at all. So here's an example of this. We must not abolish the Department of Education. Finally, if we want to make a question to ask whether something is necessary, we can start with must, then our subject, and then the base verb. Must we abolish police departments to fix policing? Uh, and this, uh, I will point out, is uh, sort of what made me think of abolish. I, I've been hearing people say abolish the police this week. I've uh, also seen it in numerous articles debating about how do we uh, end systemic racism in the United States. So um, many racist policies and practices. Uh, and this is one idea that uh, some people share. Okay, let's look at some related words to our verb abolish. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna point out again is that as I'm saying the verb, notice how the, it sounds at the beginning, abolish. Okay? My pronunciation with some of the nouns is going to change just a little bit. So, um, and some people might be looking at this and kind of wondering, hey, these words look very different uh, in terms of their spelling. Many times when we look at related words, the spelling is very close. Uh, something else to kind of point out, uh, T-I uh, used in English can make an S-H sound. So we, we, we are still going to get that shh uh, in, in our nouns. So let's look at the first word. We pronounce this abolition. Ah, ah. Can you hear the different sound there? Abolish, abolition. Okay. Abolition is the action or an act of abolishing or ending a system, a practice, or an institution. I'm going to point out the next word, uh, which is also a noun that has the exact same meaning. This is abolishment. Abolishment. So if you notice, again, same uh, beginning vowel sound like the verb. Okay? And as I noted, again, the meaning here is the same. So you might be wondering, why do we have two nouns that mean the exact same thing? One of those weird things about English. It's more common to hear the first word, A-B-O-L-I-T-I-O-N, abolition, than it is to hear abolishment. But in case you would uh, encounter either one, we always want people to, to be aware, they have the same meaning. So let's look at two example sentences. The first, the mayor of Minneapolis does not support police force abolition. Okay. Again, this is something that's been in the news. Uh, so what it's saying, uh, if we think back to that question I asked you with the modal must, must we abolish the police force? The mayor says, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't support that. Okay. I could put the word uh, abolishment in that same sentence. And again, the meaning wouldn't change. Here's another sentence. Some have called for the uh, abolishment of the police <laughs> part. So uh, again, uh, we talked about that earlier, uh, that a policy people are, are um, supportive of. And uh, again, I could take the first noun and insert it in this sentence, it would have the same meaning. Let's look at our last related word, and that's abolitionist. Abolitionist. Kind of a long one. Uh, and again, notice the first sound is um, the same as uh, the noun abolition. So it's starting with an a, a, like in cat. And an abolitionist is a person who favors the abolition or of a practice or institution. Uh, and it's most commonly, again, in history, uh, been used to talk about people who wanted to end slavery. Um, maybe just a month ago, you might have heard it used to talk about people that wanted to end the death penalty. Uh, but again, you might be 
might start hearing this a little more uh, frequently related to police policing in that subject. But here's an uh, abolitionist in a sentence. Harriet Tubman escaped slavery to become a leading abolitionist. And uh, there's a great movie that came out uh, this past year uh, all about Harriet Tubman's life uh, and her pursuits. Uh, highly recommend it if you're still sheltering in place and need something uh, to keep you busy. Thanks so much for watching today's videos uh, and the, all of this week's, I hope. Uh, I hope learning about how to use the words protest, demonstrate, march, and abolish are useful to you in understanding uh, what's been going on in the United States for the last uh, two and a half weeks. Again, uh, I'm going to put some links to other materials in about nine different languages. If you're wanting to get more information, uh, that will be there, as well as a link to information that's appropriate for children so you can have conversations with them as well. Have a great day.